wonderful to you. So we're so pleased you've joined us. It's a fraught time for Venezuela, but it's difficult for us who are part of the Scottish Venezuela Solidarity Campaign to keep up with um, uh, developments, good and bad, other than the fundamental principle of we are so proud to work with the amazing achievements, the accomplishments, the triumphs of the Venezuelan people throughout their years of democratic and progress with education, with health, with trade unions, with transport, so many things. So we are absolutely delighted to be involved with the campaign. If any of you have not had the opportunity, um, and we'll keep you as informed as you want to be. And um, there are other people around the room who are involved in the campaign and would absolutely welcome your involvement at whatever level because things are happening in Venezuela and we want to know, we want to share. Um, we have uh, two fantastic, really right from the heat of uh, the debate uh, speakers. We have Marcos Garcia, uh, who is the first secretary of the Venezuelan embassy in the UK, and if I might add, had previously spent six years in Washington DC. So what an analysis and perspective he has for us. And, and he will be speaking first, and then we're going to be moving on to our um, guest, uh, Paul Dobson, but I'll introduce him in due course. I'm Vicky Grand, and I'm the Vice Chair of the Scottish Venezuela Solidarity Campaign. So glad you could join us. I dragged that out because I could see people. I've got a unique perspective here. I can see people coming along. Everybody who is, who is coming along is now sat here, so you don't need to listen to me any longer. You'll be glad to know. Over to you, Marcos, and Thank welcome you. again to Glasgow. Thank you. This is the first time I've been in Glasgow. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, this activity is organizing a framework of, of an international solidarity campaign with Venezuela. Um, that had, had to do with specific things that are happening right now in the country. Um, I, will, I would like to be brief, because I know that when you ask questions, you know, we can get in a better coach, I would say. Uh, first, talk about the regional situation in Latin America. You know, there have been many problems with progressive government in Latin America. Most of the problems are connected with the drop in the prices of raw material. It has been affecting Brazil, Ecuador, Bolivia, or Argentina. Um, in the case of Bolivia, you may know that the deputy minister was killed in a protest organized by radical right-wing miners just last week. Uh, he, he was trying to discuss with them some solution about their request that they were making to the government, and they decided to kill him. In Argentina, the uh, government of Macri have been attacking the workers' rights in a very consistent way, increasing prices of services, uh, affecting the uh, purchasing power of workers, uh, putting in jail many progressive leaders. Even he tried to jail the president of the Madre de la Plaza de Mayo, who is a woman of 80 years old. Try to put she in jail. And he is discussing with the US the possibility to establish two US military bases in Argentina. And you have the situation in Brazil where the right wing Congress is trying to impeach President Dilma. They're looking also to put in jail former President Lula. Uh, they are trying to forbid the PT which is one of the biggest democratic left parties of Latin America. So when you go to Venezuela, the situation is more or less similar at that level, but with the local uh, differences. The right wing have been organizing uh, the sabotage of the economy. I remember uh, when I arrived to Venezuela in February 2014, they were beginning to uh, how to affect the imports of Venezuela. 
the people that work at that labor were trying to, you know, to make less requirement, less ask for less things that they need. Um, at the same time, they were organizing protests with uh, la, las guarimbas, las salidas. It was the movement where 43 people were killed. Um, as the right wing bourgeoisie control uh, most of the distribution sector, they managed to affect the distribution of food <laughs> at the same time as the oil prices dropped. In the case of Venezuela, we lost almost 80% of the income, which affected our economy. So this situation of lack of income combined with the sabotage of the distribution sector, and also combined with the economic structure of Venezuela that is heavily dependent on oil, created a situation in the, in the first part of the year, uh, which is a crisis. Basically, because you know there was not enough food, there were a lot, a lot of queue people making queues to buy anything, and then the soft command uh, declared that they were ready to intervene in Venezuela in case that the humanitarian pet crisis were declared by the multilateral organization. And uh, when they talk about multilateral organization, they are talking about the organization of American state, for instance. Uh, the government has been working hard at different levels. In, the, in this year, well, there, there are other uh, reality in Venezuela. The right wing have been killing members of the PSUV and other uh, left parties in Venezuela. Uh, in January, January, Ricardo Durán, who was a very famous journalist, was killed um, on the street. Uh, in March, Cesar Vera, uh, a member of the Legislative Council of Tachira State, was killed also in the street. He was a member of the Party Tupamaro. Uh, in, also in March, Fritz St. Louis, who was a Haitian leftist activist, was killed at the home. Just a group of people got at the home and shot him. Marco Tulio Carrillo, a mayor of the <laughs> municipality La Ceiba in Trujillo State, was killed uh, as he is arrested too. Uh, Angel Benavide, a member of the PSUV Youth Organization of the State, was killed on the street too, just walking and somebody killed him. Uh, Bar Jesus Molina, a PSUV, it was in April, local activist, was shot and, and he was shot. And then he still was alive and they took him and uh, executed him. He was um, in Caracas. In June 29, Elizabeth Aguilera, a social leader, a member of the PSUV in a neighborhood of Okota in uh, 905, 905, was killed, and then he body was burned on the street. Um, Coronel Mariano Garte also was killed on the street. He was a lawyer and judge. And Chile Gelarte, a PSUV counselor and social activist in Aragua State, was shot at her home. So there is a campaign, a uh, terrorist campaign against our activists. On the other hand, there is a sabotage of the economy. And the National Assembly is trying to approve law uh, making it legal to do everything that they have been doing during all this time. The amnesty law. The amnesty law that we tried to, uh, to approve, but it was declared illegal by the and constitutional by the Supreme Court. There were Crimes like terrorism, uh, drug trafficking, a killing, um, burning public uh, buildings, and the law said that you know they were going to forbid all that crime since 1998 up to the time when the law was uh, approved or approved. Um, also in the National Assembly, they tried to approve a law, housing law. The main objective of the housing law, you know, they will have a housing program within uh, houses of social interest for poor people who have built up to now almost 1,200,000 houses in the last uh, four years. So the main objective of this law, approved by the right wing National Assembly, was to increase the price of land 
because there was a law approved in 2011 that make the, the price of land in Venezuela cheap so that poor people can have a house in the capital city, for instance. So the law said that the government was obliged in six months to establish a new price with the order of all the lands, which obviously will increase the prices of homes. And then they say, well, you know, we're going to give the people that don't have money to pay a loan for the private bank. And then through that system, they will, they will make a big business. But you know, the problem was that the people living in those houses, they don't have enough money to pay the money they want to. Um, so that was another of the, of the situation from the legal point of view. Um, from January to here, February, to be more specific, the, the government decided to face the distribution problem creating what we call the CLAP, it's a local committee for production and distribution. It is an organization that is organized in all the neighborhoods. It's entrusted with the task to distribute food in the neighborhood uh, in coordination with the national team established by the government. Thanks to the club, we managed to, during the last month, to decrease the, le the, the or to increase the level of distribution. Um, right now, one of the concerns that, that I would have is that they don't, they want to profit for the effort they have been making sabotage in, in, with the sabotage of the economy, so that they need to organize some of the constitutional uh, referendum we have, recall referendum. Uh, they want to run the recall the referendum on this year because the, in that way, they, if in the case that they win the referendum, it will be possible for them to get into the government, national government. Uh, the problem is that there is no time, you know, they began to collect the, the signatures late. Then uh, the signatures were uh, supervised in the half of the year, and the uh, Electoral Council said that the referendum will be to be organized uh, in 2017. Because of that, the opposition decided to organize another uh, strong public demonstration, very similar to what they did in 2002 when they organized the coup d'etat. And they called for tomorrow to go to Caracas, all the opposition groups, and you know, take Caracas with the opposition. Uh, they managed to organize a demonstration, maybe it's 5,000 people, the biggest one. And that's one of the problems. Uh, the other problem they have is that they are very divided. There are like three groups, groups that want to be the leader of the opposition. And there are a lot of difference, differences. And the other problem is that they don't have any influence <coughs> in the ar army, as in the past, when they managed to organize the coup. So what they're trying to do is to create a situation that can be translated in an argument for the international community to declare the humanitarian crisis. That's more or less the strategy they have. So in this sense, it changed in relation to the way in which the right wing and the US organized coup they had in the 70s and 80s. In the case of Venezuela, they cannot do that. The same as in Brazil, Argentina. So they use a different methodology that you will see in every different case what they do. Okay, that's by the time being. I, I will ask a question, and I hope that you can have at least a brief idea of, of the thing that happened in Venezuela. Now, Paul will tell you a lot of things. Thank you.